17th century at the heart of the Champagne countryside, this listed historic chateau sits imposingly in the middle of a 50-acre park with a large terrace, a kitchen garden, and magnificent fountains. I could just stay here and relax for a good week. Paint a little, sketch a little. With its vast reception rooms decorated with painted panelings and the 17th and 18th century furniture, this splendid hotel possesses a rare charm. Some lovely bedrooms and suites have been delightfully situated with romantic views over the moat that surrounds the building. It was a relaxing step back in time. As a base for our visit to the Champagne region, we couldn't have done any better. The queen of the castle. Over here. Over what? Over here is the queen. <laughs> Dozens of wonderful champagne houses are within a stone's throw for, from the big names like Moet and Chardon to some lovely smaller ones. accommodations, treat yourself to a classic room, delicious food at the Atelier Bistro, which has fine dining in the Orangerie where guests can enjoy regional and traditional gourmet cuisine. A very friendly and gracious staff, we spent four days of absolute chilled bliss. We would return in a heartbeat. On the way to the Moyet and Chandon winery, we passed by the Chateau de Saran. Years ago, I had the pleasure of being invited for dinner here for an eight-course dinner paired with champagnes and wines that was extraordinary. Back to one of Richard's old memories, a wonderful, magnificent dinner and wine champagne. Champagne, right? That you all had cigars and got drunk and a happy time. And he was hoping to get back up there and sneak in again. But 
you know, as luck would have it, we only get to see it from the outside. <laughs> We are now in Epernay in uh, Champagne country and we are going to have a tour of the Moet and Chandon cellars which would be pretty spectacular. We're going to start the tour here. I will talk about the history and heritage of our house yeah. and our um, Then we're going to watch a short video uh, relating to uh, the winemaking process. And then we're going to visit the cellars. I'm going to explain the champagne making process. And at the end, we will have a tasting session guided by one of our sommeliers. So here we are at the heart of the family residence. Um, it all began in 1743 when uh, Claude Moet founded what was to become the largest champagne house today, House of Moet. Um, he thought, why not transforming this prestigious but little known regional wine into a favorite of cosmopolitan courtiers around throughout Europe. So he expanded his business and he entered neighboring markets. Uh, so quickly his champagnes became very uh, famous in uh, Europe's uh, courts throughout Europe. Uh, he was the official supplier to the court of French King Louis XV. Uh, the king's mistress, La Marquise de Pompadour, a very uh, influential woman of her time, loved our champagnes, and she would say, there is no other wine in the world that makes every woman even more beautiful after drinking. <laughs> when I was last here about 22 years ago, I was ushered into this salon where I was served champagne waiting for my private tour. In this room, President Clinton had just been two weeks prior. This video, in a very short way, depicts how grapes are made from the pressing house, which is on the premises of the winery so that the grapes don't have to travel so that they are not damaged. If during the picking process a grape is damaged, it is rejected and does not become part of the winemaking. Once the grapes are crushed, the liquid wine is made, it's then bottled and soured, sometimes up to 10 years. Very good. Perfect. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, okay, good. So, uh, very few wines are as universally known as champagne. Um, a defining element to touch the walls and you're going to feel that humidity that I was talking about. This is the humidity that's going to keep those vines with uh, water supplied during the dry summer months. So this is the mythical place where we keep our uh, vintage wine collection. Mm -hmm. So think of it like a liquid patrimony of Moët en Chandon, but it's also a liquid library. These stacks of wine are row upon row and they go as far back as 18 to 20 rows deep.
the second fermentation that is unique to champagne <coughs> is going to start. Now, in the second fermentation, same process, the sugar, the yeast is going to eat the sugar and it's going to produce carbon dioxide. But this time, the carbon dioxide is trapped in the bottle. Oh. What do you think of that? I think it's all right. Yeah, and uh, some of the Yeah, and some of the Please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you get notified when the next video is posted. Thank you for watching.